Oh, Perfect. hey everyone, it's Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and I had a ton of really cool footage to show you guys for today's episode. But unfortunately, like an idiot, I lost the memory card to my camera. I was poking around trying to figure out how I could have been so careless, and I quickly found the answer to that. So yeah, I need a new camera bag. So Rich Rebuilds will be stepping up his equipment carrying game. And just to give you an idea of what equipment I'll be stepping up, this is what I'm working with right now in terms of my tripod. And here is actually what my camera holding case looks like. It's literally a broken plastic container. So expect lots of changes to my current gear. Anyways, today we're going to talk about how I typically disassemble Tesla battery packs, which is arguably the most unsafe way on planet Earth. The purpose of this episode is to recycle this Tesla battery pack and put it to good use in other areas. The modules themselves will be used in a home power storage, and the casing of the battery pack will be used to build another Tesla battery trailer. Now, the battery pack I'll be working on today was pulled from this car, and we discovered it had a crack in it. I opened up the top cover of the pack to see if there was any additional damage, and there wasn't, which was awesome, but let's take it apart anyways. First off, I'm going to make sure that the battery pack is outside, which is arguably the only correct thing I'll be doing in this video, because when I short the battery, I don't want Lee's shop to go up in flames. <laughs> Have you ever seen a single lithium ion battery catch fire? Well, imagine this times 7,000. This is my PSA. Don't try this at home. If you do, wear high voltage gloves and don't use metal pry tools to open near the batteries. So, first we have to remove the top plastic cover, which is the battery insulation blanket. I use a razor blade all around the top of the pack to cut the plastic and then pop off the cover. Now, the insulation blanket is great, however, it also traps water on top of the pack itself, which can also lead to water seeping past the top screws and getting back into the battery pack. The blanket can't breathe because it's sealed, so water is trapped in there and stays there forever. Now, I'm going to remove all the screws that hold down the top of the pack itself, which takes forever. Okay, now I remove the top hump, which I already removed the screws for in a different video. Now, it's time to remove the additional 130 screws holding the top of the pack down. Oof, are we done? Nope. I now have to remove the larger screws that act as the tunnel for the main bolts that hold the pack into the car. Thankfully, there aren't as many of these, and they're located at the center, top, and bottom of the pack. And they're so strong that one of them alone can support the weight of the battery pack itself. Now, here's the tricky part. Picking up the corners of the battery pack, this is glued pretty well, so I have to break the adhesive first. A lot of people use an adhesive cutter tool and work their way around the pack. I didn't bring my adhesive cutting tool with me because I don't own one, nor do I have any desire right now to save the top of this battery pack cover, so I'm gonna do this the fun way. After I remove the rubber gasket trim from around the pack and then start lifting the edges up more, I'm gonna peel them back about a foot and I'm gonna start drilling my holes. Now these are important because this is what I'll be using to attach the hooks to in order to pull up the rest of the cover. After I have my pilot holes drilled, I'll bring the pack back into Lee's shop to see what's next in store. We're going to use the lift with hooks to lift up the cover of the battery pack and expose the battery modules. Keep on going until I tell you. Good. Opening the tuna can. I think this is how Tesla looking does this. Chris specifically said for Lee to use his own lift, I think. And then Lee said, no, we're no. using your lift. It's 
sardine can very slowly. Literally, a giant sardine can. <laughs> Here we are back outside with the pack exposed. And on top of the pack are the mica sheets that I have to take off that shield each battery module. Now the process that I follow to remove each module is a little unorthodox. I undo the high voltage connections, remove the larger connections, and then slowly pry up the battery module with tools. I cut the coolant line and then gently remove the module from the pack. And here's a quick clip of me removing two modules from start to finish. Now the ones on the edge are a little bit more challenging unfortunately because this metal bar didn't come up with the pack's top cover so these require a little bit more work. You're probably asking yourself why I'm cutting the coolant lines in the middle as opposed to the end. Well for me it's easier this way and the most important part of the cooling line is the connector that goes to the tube itself. Overall the process took about two hours from start to finish, working by myself at a regular pace, but hopefully this video gave you a general idea on the process to remove modules from a tested battery pack. Coming up soon I'll show you the process of building a crate to ship the batteries, general shenanigans with Lee. What's up doggo? Hey Lee. I'm pretty damn high. This is pretty high. The best part is... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Woo, it was like a fun ride. Thank you, Lee, for doing that incredibly dangerous thing for me. I no, appreciate no that. OSHA approved. And also an old school electric car project that we're working on making modern again. Rubber too. Let's try dumping gasoline on it and see what happens. Oh. I know you are all itching for some good old fashioned Tesla rebuild content, but those big projects have been paused until I can get my own shop and I have more space to do some cool stuff. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all soon. All right, guys, so I just got a ton of Amazon boxes. Let's see what's inside these bad boys, all right? First off, I got a new bag with reinforced edges, so no more holes in the corners. This is what I use to store my laptop. A new and sturdier tripod. This one is 10 times better. A lot higher quality as well. Here's what I'm super excited about. The actual camera bag itself is a far cry from what I had before versus now. But here's some new equipment that I have in the mail. You guys were complaining about the shakiness of a lot of videos, so I got a manual stabilizer. See, I also have room for my drone in here, which is awesome. No more losing memory cards, because now 
I have memory card case. I have room for the hard drives, my DSLR. I have room for my GoPro and various GoPro mounts, including the oral mounts. What else do I have going on in here? Also, even more importantly, I have room for my batteries, instruction manuals, 